7 over the scene. Shannon, what can you tell us? Well, the good news is that a lot of those lanes are reopened. We're down to just one car left here on the eastbound side of the LIE. And we'll bring up Street Spotter 7 so that you can see it, the service road there on the top part of your screen. But despite the fact that we've got these lanes reopened, unfortunately, the damage done, this accident could not have happened at a worse time. So as you get past exit 34, you've got that to look forward to. Now, things are starting to move a little better, but unfortunately, it does look like the damage done. Look at this. This is a bumper-to-bumper -bumper delay well back in into Queens back towards exit 23 for the Cross Island Parkway. And unfortunately, it's not going to get better anytime soon. This is going to take a while before these delays ease out. If you can take it any other way, take it down to the Grand Central Parkway. That's going to treat you better this evening. Reporting live over the LIE, Shannon Sohn, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Shannon, thank you. Now to that deadly stabbing in the Bronx, a terrifying and chaotic scene early this morning. Yes, people in the neighborhood heard screams. They then saw a man stabbing that woman to death death. It happened in the Morsania section. Police there are now searching for the woman's ex-husband for questioning. I want to use reporter Kimberly Richardson is live there with new details about their relationship. Kim. Well, Liz, we are now learning much more about the mother of two who was brutally stabbed to death here on Jackson Avenue. Family members say Adelisa Garo was walking to work when the suspect approached her. It was a vicious assault. The blows were so hard, the blade of the knife actually broke off. We saw and got surveillance video that shows NYPD officers responding to the scene. Now, relatives say Garo was in a stormy relationship. Actually, it was with her husband, not her ex-husband. And now detectives are looking for him, want to know where he was just after 8 this morning. That's when the 44-year-old victim was at Jackson Avenue and Home Street. Witnesses say a man in a black Camry got out, approached Garrow, and began stabbing her. The grisly murder happened right in front of Carmen Dixon's home. She saw it all. When I screamed, the sanitation guy came, you know? When I screamed, you know, because I'm seeing this and, and I screamed, the sanitation was cleaning around, so he came towards there. And he see the lady there and the man, on, you know, like practically on top of her, stabbing her. So when the guy realized that the sanitation is right there, so he runs. So he takes off and the guy, the sanitation runs after him, the car is right there, he gets inside the car and, and the guy tried to open, you know, sanitation tried to open the door, but the guy pushed it and locked it. And the suspect in that black Camry actually drove on the sidewalk and down Jackson Avenue. Family members say Garrow separated from her husband four years ago. He moved back in, but about two weeks ago, he became aggressive and she kicked him out. She did have a restraining order. We'll hear much more from them coming up at 5. For now, we're live in the Bronx. Kimberly Richardson, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Kimberly, thank you. Former Congressman Anthony Weiner sobbed as he apologized for sexting a 15-year-old girl during his sentencing hearing today. Weiner called himself a sick man who victimized a young person who deserved better. The judge said his serious crime deserved a serious punishment before she gave him 21 months in prison. Weiner must also register as a sex offender, supply DNA, and pay a $10,000 fine. Former State Senator Tom Duane came to support his friend. I think he's a, a, a basically a very good person. I was saddened and upset by the actions uh, that uh, he took. The more uh, people who care about him are around, uh, the more likely it is that he can have uh, a day-by-day -day recovery. Weiner will also have to complete an outpatient sex offender program and will be on supervised release for three years. He must surrender by November 6th. None of the war of words with North Korea and tensions were ratcheted up yet again today when North Korea's foreign minister said the country had the right to shoot down American warplanes even if they're not in North Korean airspace. He also added that President Trump's threatening comments were a declaration of war. Well, this afternoon, the White House immediately pushed back. ABC's Elizabeth Herr has the latest. North Korea firing back to what it claims was a declaration of war from President Trump. North Korea's foreign minister, Ri Yong Ho, who earlier called President Trump a mentally deranged person who committed an irreversible mistake at the UN, to which the president tweeted, 
Just heard Foreign Minister of North Korea speak at UN. If he echoes thoughts of little rocket man, they won't be around much longer. Ri now says that tweet gives Pyongyang the right to shoot down U.S. bombers in self-defense, even if they do not enter North Korean airspace. Last week, North Korea even threatened to test a hydrogen bomb in the Pacific Ocean. My sense is that tensions are as high as they've been in anybody's recollection. Um, we're, we're really at a dangerous point. The but former the vice chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff on this week saying the time is States. now for the U.S. to specify what will not be tolerated to avoid a military confrontation. <laughs> Over the weekend, rising tensions on display in North Korea with thousands rallying against the U.S. This as the U.S. military in a continued show of force with South Korea flew U.S. bombers north of the DMZ farther than any time in nearly two decades. We've not declared war on North Korea, uh, and frankly, the suggestion of that is absurd. Pentagon officials also responded, saying that the military will do whatever it takes to safeguard the U.S. and our allies, and that all military options will be provided to the president. I'm Elizabeth Hare for Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Well, the U.S. Supreme Court just a short time ago canceling arguments set for next month in the bitter legal battle over President Trump's travel ban. The high court was supposed to begin hearing arguments on the legality of the travel ban next month. It canceled the hearing after the Trump administration rolled out a new policy over the weekend. The new travel restrictions are for citizens of eight countries. North Korea and Venezuela have been added to the list. Well, angry protests erupted inside the U.S. Senate this afternoon over the Republicans' latest effort to repeal Obamacare. Hundreds of protesters demonstrated outside a committee hearing on the contentious bill, and some managed to interrupt the panel's chairman, Utah Republican Orrin Hatch, when he started speaking. Hatch gaveled the committee into recess temporarily as demonstrators were removed. GOP senators continued to tweak the Graham-Cassidy legislation, hoping to garner last-minute support. Right now, it appears that there is not enough Republicans on board to pass the bill. Military officials say the U.S. Defense Department is working around the clock to deliver assistance to hurricane-battered Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Across the Caribbean, Hurricane Maria claimed at least 43 lives. It hit Puerto Rico as a Category 4 storm last week, taking out power to almost the entire territory of 3 million people. Electricity still has not been restored. Mayor de Blasio spoke about the situation in Puerto Rico today and said every New Yorker is somehow connected to the people there. There's a lot of pain, there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of fear. And there are 700,000 people here, proud Puerto Ricans who are feeling it very, very sharply, very personally. Well, Mayor de Blasio said there are 58 New York City workers in Puerto Rico providing direct support under FEMA. They are organizing additional emergency teams right now. So where is Maria now? Remarkably, it is still a hurricane, and do we need to worry about it impacting our weather here? Meteorologist Lee Goldberg is still tracking the storm. He's outside with the latest on that and, of course, our summer-like weather. Lee. All right, Liz. Yeah, the goal this week is to have no landfalling hurricanes, and I think we could reach that goal. There will be some impact on the east coast from Maria, but it looks just like some rough surf and some outer bands on the outer banks right now. Meanwhile, summer's still on extended play right now. Lots of sunshine out there. It's very warm at 86 degrees. In fact, it feels like it's close to 90 in many spots. Only along the coast now with the wind off the Atlantic, it's a little bit cooler, but we're 89 in Poughkeepsie and we are 88 in Newark right now. Maria's center is about 600 miles to our south-southeast. You can see a little squally on the Outer Banks with a few rain bands there and certainly kicking up the surf. Thankfully, the storm is now a minimal hurricane and it's moving slowly to the north at 7 miles an hour. And that is critical because it'll be off the Outer Banks safely. I mean, there's still some impacts with some tropical storm before it's gusts. But it's safely offshore during the morning hours on Wednesday, and then we're all counting on this very sharp and abrupt right turn and out into the Atlantic as we go into late week, and we're high confidence that'll happen. Meanwhile, tropical storm warnings for the Outer Banks and the impact along the entire East Coast, including our shoreline, is the high surf, the beach erosion, and the dangerous rip currents will continue through the week. So what you need to know is extended summer through Wednesday. Rough surf and rip currents from Maria will continue until probably later Thursday. Thursday when the wind comes off the land and that fall feel is coming back as we flip the calendar. October arrives this weekend and so does some, I wouldn't say chilly temperatures, but certainly refreshing compared to what we're seeing right now. So enjoy the warmth while it lasts. Seven day AccuWeather forecast complete update coming up in just a few minutes. Listen, Lauren, back to you for now. Thanks, Lee.
First and four, detectives from an elite division within the NYPD suing the department today, claiming they were repeatedly passed over for promotions because of their race. In the federal complaint, one officer says he was even told by a supervisor that if he were white, he would have been promoted. Eyewitness News reporter Sandra Bookman is live in Lower Manhattan with more. Sandra. Yeah, Lauren, the detectives here actually filed a federal complaint against the department back in 2011. Just last year, after a five-year investigation, the EEOC concluded that the NYP does, in fact, discriminate when it comes to promotions of promoting African-American uh, detectives in the Intelligence Bureau. Well, these detectives say because the department made no move to change that situation, they today decided to file this federal class action lawsuit. Now, there are three detectives named in this suit. Detective John, uh, retired detectives, I should say, were named, named in this suit. John McCullum, Roland Stevens, Theodore Coleman. Mr. Coleman is actually deceased. He is being represented in the suit by his wife. Now, again, these detectives say they were systematically passed over for promotions despite uh, excellent recommendations, despite their exemplary records. They say they are hoping that this lawsuit will change what they are calling the NYPD's discriminatory culture. We both did the same job. Uh, my white counterparts did a great job. I worked right alongside them and should have got promoted with them. They are smart. They are accomplished. They are committed to the mission of the department. Despite that, they were repeatedly passed over for promotion. For one reason and for one reason alone, and that is the color of their skin. Uh, back live now outside of one police plaza. The plaza. Those detectives point out this just wasn't about uh, the prestige of doing this job. Economics also a factor. Those uh, detective positions in the higher grades, they make $30,000 more at least than detectives at lower grades. Uh, right now we are waiting for a comment from the NYPD. We expect to get that shortly. We will, of course, bring you later tonight on Eyewitness News at 6. For now, we're live outside one police plaza. I'm Sam Sandra Bookman, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Sandra, thank you. And still to come this afternoon, the FBI joins the investigation into that deadly church shooting. We're going to tell you what we've learned about the man who opened fire inside a house of worship and the church usher who's now being called a hero. But first in the subways, the MTA unveils new steps to measure service quality and see how the new way you'll be able to find out how much longer the train wait will be, how that's coming too. Today, five coffee apps make it easy to pay, but do they leave you exposed to theft? How much money are you out? Two thousand one hundred fifty dollars. Why won't the coffee giant brew up a refund? Seven on your side takes on a job of giant and reveals how to protect your coffee cash. Today at five on Channel Seven Eye, witness to you. Cars ready? Wrong car. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. You guys want to check it out? It's someone else's car. What is this? It's the all-new Chevy Equinox. This feels like a luxury SUV. Your car is here. Bummer. <laughs> Do we have to take that one back? Mm. Wah, wah. Can I take this one home? <laughs> the all-new 2018 Chevy Equinox is everything you need to do everything you want. Current qualified competitive lessees can get this Equinox LT for around $199 a month. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Today, innovation in the Finger Lakes is moving forward. Once known as the world's image center, it is now a leader in optics, photonics, and imaging. Fueled by strong university partnerships providing the world's best talent and supported with workforce development to create even more opportunities. Here and all across New York State, we're building the new New York. To grow your business with us in the Finger Lakes, visit esd.ny.gov untouchable value and tremendous choice. Two things you're guaranteed to find at my Bob's Discount Furniture every day. Like my Navigator, glove soft and durable performance fabric. Bobopedic memory foam seating for extra comfort. Stylish two-tone design. Get the sofa and love seat for only $9.99. Or you can power them up with push-button power reclining. Both pieces only $11.99. Untouchable value and tremendous choice every day. Only at Bob's Discount Furniture. This commuter alert is...
Thanks. Time now for a look at the commute on this Monday afternoon. This is a live look right now, the LIE by Lakeville Road. There was an earlier backup here because of an accident on North Hills, but uh, you can see traffic's now slowly moving again. As for the Hudson River crossings, there are 30 minute delays at the outbound Holland Tunnel, 20 minute delays at the outbound Lincoln, and 15 minute delays right now on the upper level of the George Washington Bridge. And big losses by technology stocks were behind today's downward spiral on Wall Street. One of the biggest declines was in Facebook stock. It tumbled by 3.8%. Here's a live look at the Dow. It closed just minutes ago down 53 points to 22,296. The FBI has launched a civil rights investigation into a deadly church shooting in Tennessee. The accused gunman, Emmanuel Sampson, is now charged with murder. Police say the 25-year-old shot and killed Melanie Smith in the parking lot of the church in Antioch after services yesterday, and then he made his way inside an open fire, injuring seven people. Smith's children say they will remember their mother's love, not the gunman's hate. I'm not going to focus on him. I'm going to focus on my family and the mom I love and I miss. I'll still pray for the rest of my life, knowing that my mom is still here with me and knowing that she loves me. Investigators believe the quick action of the church usher Robert Engel saved lives. Police say Samson moved to the U.S. from Sudan in 1996. Church members say the suspect went to church about two years ago. Well, the mayor of Patterson, New Jersey, has officially resigned from the job after pleading guilty to corruption charges. A judge signed an order this morning removing Joey Torres from office. Last week, you may recall, the 58-year-old admitted to having city employees work on a warehouse leased by his family. Under the plea deal, Torres is expected to get five years in prison and will not be able to hold public office in the future. Well, the MTA today unveiled some flashy new digital dashboards, hoping to give strap hangers a better sense of their lot ride or really how bad it is. For the first time, riders will know how much longer than normal they are waiting on a platform, as well as how many minutes are wasted inside delayed trains. This is really based on our actual customers and the trips that they take, what station they start at, what station, station they end at, what time of day they travel, and which trains, local or express, they use. Well, the changes also include a tally of major incidents and how well the MTA is sticking to its train schedule. Be interesting to see the results. I know when I'm sitting on a delayed train, I don't want to know how know. long I'm there for. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. Uh, Today is the perfect day, though, to get out of the exactly. subway station and to be outside. Yeah, yeah, no, above ground, certainly better. But I will say, at very accurate times in terms of next train coming and now the touch screens that tell you where the route you can take to go places, pretty right. cool down yeah. on the subway platform. All right, yeah, so we are summary once again today, and it's not over yet. We're going to be really warm through the middle of the week, and there's no just drastic cool down. It's just back to normal as we head through late weekend, a little chilly over the weekend. We look over Central Park right now on this beautiful Monday afternoon that feels more like mid-August than autumn. 86 degrees right now. You know, the humidity is at 49%. It's a little sticky out. Northeast wind at about 12, and the high today in the upper 80s. 72 is the average high, the record 90 back in 1970, so pretty close to that. Sun will set tonight at 648, and then again, it'll feel like a nice summer night. On the island with the wind off the 72-degree water, you can see it's 79 in Comac, 75 Hampton Bays. Roslyn, though, is 85 degrees right now. Inland numbers in the Hudson Valley are still approaching 90, and same thing northwest New Jersey. And then down the shore, a little bit cooler at Lake Crest. I mean, nice and cooler, 84 degrees, 81 in Atlantic City. These dew points are in the mid-60s to the lower 70s. That's pretty stuffy. You really don't see that this time of year. It also speaks to the fact that we have Hurricane Maria out in the Atlantic, and you also still have the remnants of Jose offshore, so tropical air mass in place partially. Wind speed light, but coming off the water for the most part, and that easterly flow, along with the waves that keep propagating out of Maria and Jose for that matter, you can see there are about three to five footers along our immediate coast, but there are some eight footers sitting offshore. Look at near the core of Maria. 35 to 40 foot waves. So this tremendous amount of wave energy that's coming out toward the coast and there's some 14 to 17 footers in the Carolinas to the Mid-Atlantic. So our waves will increase tomorrow, the small craft advisory. 
tonight. Mainly clear in the evening hours. I think a combination of some high clouds from Maria and also some patchy low clouds come in tomorrow morning. So clouds break for sun tomorrow. It's a partly sunny day. Temperatures getting in the low 80s. Pretty amazing map here because there's some snow in the northern Rockies. You got that front that's splitting up the country basically. And that is the key to getting Maria to be launched out to sea. And that arrives just in the nick of time for us late week. Now while we have sunshine out here, about 600 miles to our south is Maria. But just offshore, see that little cluster of cloudiness? That's the remnants of Jose. So like we told you last week, they were going to be dancing partners in the Atlantic. And very key that Jose made the water up well a little bit to the south. Look at the water temperatures in between the 80s there. 76 degrees where Maria is sitting. And that's why it weakened a little bit and became a little less organized. So we have Jose to thank for that. Also, Maria's kind of slow moving. So the otter bands are slowly coming on shore in the Carolinas. They don't get a, a, a huge impact. And then this thing just shifts offshore. Sure, look, a mix of clouds and sun being Maria on Wednesday, and then it exits offshore. Warm and sticky for us tonight. Clear to partly cloudy sky 71. Lower to mid 80s tomorrow. Partly sunny. A little bit more cloudiness than today for sure. And then partly to mostly cloudy tomorrow night. Warm and humid about 70. Coming up after 4.30, we'll look at that late week cool down, get a refreshing breeze late, late week, and then look at the weekend, which is more average for October. And one of the days looks like it definitely will get out of the 60s. So more on that after 4.30 in the 7-day AccuWeather weather forecast. When I come inside, regretfully. Back All right. to you guys. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Lee. Right. We are following some breaking news right now that we do want to tell you about a serious accident involving several cars. Happened on Route 303. This is in Rockland County. Uh, we know that at least one person has been seriously injured. You're looking at live pictures from News Copter 7. You can see it, that Enterprise rental truck mm. just rammed right into the other vehicle. It's Shannon like a Sohn, dump truck. Yeah. yeah, Shannon Sohn is in News Copter 7. Shannon, what do we know happened here? Oh, it's just a terrible accident, and that dump truck is carrying asphalt, so you can imagine how heavy it was when it slammed into that Enterprise truck there. So, I mean, look at the truck itself, that Enterprise truck rental truck. The cab is completely gone. It is literally smashed into the box truck itself. So just a terrible accident. Since we have been over the scene in the last few minutes, we watched police and fire department extricate one person from that rental truck. We know from Clarkstown Police that there is at least one, if not more, serious injuries. But we're just going to bring this picture out. And what we'll do is we'll bring up Street Spotter 7 for you so that you can see that this is at the intersection of Route 303. That's the northbound side of the roadway, right where it comes in with Storms Road there. So a very bad accident. Unclear as to exactly what happened here, but they are going to be doing an investigation here with those serious injuries. And you need to know if you travel through this area, 303, despite the fact that the accident is on the northbound side, is shut down in both directions between Lake Road and North Palisade Center Drive. So basically right on through to the throughway. This is going to be a long investigation, but it looks like all the injuries are now in ambulances. There may even be a medevac here waiting to transport one of those injuries. Reporting live over Valley Cottage, Shannon Stone, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Shannon, thank you. A controversy over statues of Christopher Columbus and some cities consider whether to remove them. We'll tell you why some folks on Long Island are offering to give those statues a home. And at the end of a sports era, see what Carmelo Anthony has to say about leaving New York after six seasons with the Knicks. His goodbye message is coming up. We'll be right back. Michael Weatherly and Chris Jansen, plus Katie Mixon from American Housewife. So what kind of American Housewife are you? The kind you don't want to mess with, Seacrest. You do Next Live. Watch live tomorrow morning at 9 on ABC7. He sees things and analyzes things in ways that we can't even begin to understand. He saved his life. Who are you? I'm Dr. Sean Murphy. Hey, do you like this one? It's shiny, isn't it? Shiny's not going to do it. Let's talk safety. Well, uh, Elantra has lane departure warning. I'm listening. And blind spot detection with rear cross traffic alert. Hmm, I like it. As a new big brother, I approve. Better is the reason to buy Hyundai. Well, why don't we find someone to entertain your parents and we'll talk finances. Now lease a 2018 Elantra for $119 a month or get up to $37.50 total savings on 2017 Elantras. Offers end October 2nd. Your internet deserves the 100% fiber optic network. With Fios Gigabit Connection, you get our fastest internet ever with download speeds up to 940 megs. That's 20 times faster than most people have. Switch to Fios Gigabit Connection with TV and phone for $79.99 a month online for the first year. Plus, your choice of 
HBO or multi-room DVR service included for two years, all with a two-year agreement. And get out of your contract with up to a $500 credit to help cover your early termination fee. Get the 100% fiber optic network. Go to FiosGigabit.com. At Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey, we have the insight to transform, the passion to lead, and the innovation to deliver the future of cancer treatment today. We are New Jersey's only National Cancer Institute designated comprehensive cancer center in partnership with RWJ Barnabas Health, New Jersey's largest healthcare system. World-class cancer care is closer than you think. Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey. Sanmencia, the city of swans, known as the birthplace of Chinese civilization. Walk the ancient Silk Road. Explore the most important dam in China's history. Sanmencia, China's pearl on the Yellow River. Saturday, September 30th at 7.30 p.m. on ABC7. Eyewitness News needs your help to protect our children. Have you seen Jonathan? ABC7 and your Tri-State Ford dealers thank you for helping protect our children. The trade that seemed like it was years in the making has finally happened. The Knicks made it official today, sending Carmelo Anthony to the Oklahoma City Thunder. The team made it clear for months that they felt Melo should play elsewhere next season. Anthony finally relented, waiving his no-trade clause to go to the Thunder. And the team sent this tweet today, thanking him for his contributions to the team and to New York. Anthony penned a letter to the Knicks fans on his website and then spoke right to them when he was introduced this afternoon in Oklahoma. Oklahoma City. You know, it, it happens. It's sports. Um, you know, it, 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 there's times in sports where everybody got to go their separate ways, and uh, there's no hard feelings. There's no bad blood between, you know, myself and that organization or anybody over there. Um, but I'm here now. Well, the Knicks got back two players and a draft pick in return, and their first team practice of the season is tomorrow. So strange to see him in that uniform. Well, ABC's new fall season kicks off tonight, and it begins with the premiere of The Good Doctor. It's about a brilliant young doctor who suffers from a form of autism. Entertainer reporter Sandy Kenyon caught up with the star of the show. He's here now with the first look. Sandy. Liz, some three and a half million Americans have some form of autism, according to the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC. And yet those with autism are very rarely depicted in primetime dramas. Tonight, that changes with the premiere of a new series on ABC starring a gifted actor who really did his homework to play the good doctor. Freddie Highmore, the British actor who won our hearts as a boy in the movie Finding Neverland, then grew up on TV in Bates Motel, stands at the center of this drama, created by the same guy who gave us House. I'm Dr. Sean Murphy. Medical dramas are as old as TV itself, but what makes the good doctor different is his autism. We don't negate the very real struggles that Sean faces by dint of having autism, but at the same time, we see him laugh, we see what makes him smile, we see, we understand his sense of humor, and so it's a fully formed character as opposed to just that small, narrow stereotype. The pilot episode demonstrates his challenges and his skills. Sean also has savant syndrome and so has genius level skills in certain areas that allow allows him to uh, see things that other people can't when diagnosing medical issues. You have to put the pressure higher up. Before he ever gets to the hospital, the good doctor saves a boy's life. But once he arrives, not everyone is convinced a guy with autism should be a surgical resident. And we have to kind of face off in the way we see things and, and me trying to bring him around to a surgeon and possibly him bringing me around to understanding and seeing the world a little differently. This doctor is all about adding more diversity to prime time. This idea of somebody with a difference trying to fit in and to deal with the fact that people discriminate, uh, will discriminate and do discriminate against him, you know, and that's really interesting. The good doctor struck me as particularly worthwhile because my cousin is autistic. I still remember the moment when, after many decades, he looked me in the eye for the first time when we were young adults. Today, he's a very successful dealer of rare coins, and the fictional good doctor celebrates the achievements of real people everywhere along the spectrum of autism. The show airs at 10 p.m. tonight after Dancing with the Stars. Lauren, Liz? 
Okay. Nice to see that reflected on TV. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks, Thanks Sandy. Sandy. New developments in the firestorm over national anthem protests. Hear what the White House has to say about the backlash over President Trump's feud with the NFL and new reaction from athletes. As speaking of athletes, see who former NBA star Shaquille O'Neal wants to become the next governor of New Jersey. Closed captioning is sponsored by Raymore and Flanagan. For the closest location, visit Raymore. Littering in subways isn't just rude, dangerous, and illegal. It's on New York, and it makes everyone late, including you. Garbage can cause track fires and flooding, resulting in major delays. Plus, added enforcement means littering will cost you a $100 fine. So do your part as a good New Yorker and dispose of waste properly. Keep New York moving. Remember, it's our MTA. T-Mobile's Unlimited now includes Netflix on us. That's right, Netflix on us. Get four unlimited lines for just 40 bucks each. Taxes and fees included. And now, Netflix included. So go ahead, binge on us. Woo! Another reason why T-Mobile is America's best unlimited network. Were you in Lower Manhattan on 9-11 or in the months following the World Trade Center terrorist attacks? Did you live or work south of Canal Street in the months after 9-11? Were you a first responder or volunteer at Ground Zero? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you may be entitled to money damages. The federal government has established a fund for victims of 9-11, but time is running out. For information, call the lawyers at Parker Wakeman now. Just call. That's all. 1-800-JUST-CALL. This is the J.D. Power Award for dependability. I want you to give it to the friend that is most dependable. Oh! Is this required? Does she have to? She doesn't have to. <laughs> Tough choice, isn't it? Yes. Well, luckily, Chevy makes it a little easier because it's the only brand to earn J.D. Power Dependability Awards for cars, trucks, and SUVs two years in a row. Wow, it's really nice in here. Current qualified competitive lessees can get this 2017 Chevy Malibu for around $169 a month. See your local Chevy dealer. Optimum customers. Channel 7, the ESPN and Disney networks in free form may soon be gone from your Optimum lineup. Call Optimum at 1-800-877-8849. Let them know you want to keep the networks you're paying for. The White House today is standing behind President Trump on his comments on the NFL players who knelt during the national anthem, saying it's always appropriate for the president to defend the flag. You know, widespread protests by players were held on the sidelines of the NFL games yesterday. Some players refused to take the field during the anthem. Others, as you probably saw, simply knelt. Well, today, more professional athletes are speaking out against the president. Eyewitness News reporter Josh Einiger is in the newsroom with more on this. Josh. Well, Lauren and Liz, it was, of course, the president's remarks on Friday that brought about this tidal wave of protest across the NFL over the weekend, a national fury among football royalty. If anyone has more Twitter followers than Donald Trump... The people run this country, not one individual, and damn sure not him. It's the NBA's LeBron James, and after blasting the president on social media over the weekend this afternoon, he let loose in person. He doesn't understand how many kids, no matter the race, look up to, look up to the president of the United States for, for guidance, for leadership, for, for words of encouragement. He doesn't understand that. And that's what makes me more... That's what makes me more sick than anything. Get that son of a off the field right now. Out. He's fired. Last Friday, amid rising tensions with North Korea and another fight over Obamacare, President Trump, Trump declared war on professional football Sunday. players who've been kneeling during the national anthem to protest police brutality. It is kind of a surreal scene. But on Sunday, hundreds of other players joined in the protest. Others who didn't instead locked arms in solidarity, joined in many cases by their team owners. Even New England's Tom Brady, a friend of the president's, said he went too far. 
I certainly disagree with, you know, what he said and, 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 you know, thought it was just divisive. The hashtag take a knee quickly went viral, retweeted nearly four million times. But many fans, along with some players, are backing the president. Pittsburgh's Alejandro Villanueva, a former Army Ranger, was the only member of his team even to emerge onto the field for the anthem yesterday. And today, the NFL's online store reported Villanueva merchandise had spiked. He's now the league's top seller. And this isn't about the president being against some Something, which is what everybody wants to drive. This is about the president being for something. This is about the president being for respect in our country through symbols like the American flag, like the national anthem, and the hundreds of thousands of people that actually stand. A uh, few people are disputing that the football players taking a knee are Americans exercising their First Amendment right. His press secretary says the president has no regrets, though, about calling them SOBs. Mm. Lauren? Josh, thank you. A trial is now underway in the Bronx of a woman charged with carving an unborn baby out of a woman's womb and then leaving the expectant mother to die. Prosecutors say the wannabe mother, 23-year-old Ashley Wade, turned into a killer when she attacked and murdered her former childhood friend with a knife after pretending to be pregnant for several months. Angelique Sutton died after being cut open. The baby, Genesis, survived the ordeal and is now 22 months old. Well, lawyers for an insurance company say a man from Connecticut who was lost at sea with his mother made, quote, curious alter uh, changes to his boat before that boat then sank. Nathan Carmen was rescued from the ocean off of Rhode Island back in 2015 when his mother's body, however, was never found. Carmen was also a person of interest in his grandfather's murder. Lawyers say Carmen is refusing to cooperate with an investigation and is evasive and not acting in good faith. Members of the organization called Harlem Mothers Group Save marked the National Day of Remembrance for murder victims by reading the names of their loved ones. The New York City Police Commissioner James O'Neill joined dozens of women on West 128th Street today to talk about how gun violence claimed the lives of their relatives. Balloons were also released in honor of the victims. Well, there were plenty of cheers in the crowd at a pep rally in New Jersey with some big names in attendance. NBA Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal offered his support to the students at Rukaik High School in New Jersey. O'Neal told the students he grew up in the area and understands the struggles that they experience. He advised them to believe in themselves and the education system as well. Shaq also met with some of the students, as you can see in the video. Democratic nominee for governor of New Jersey, uh, Phil Murphy, also spoke to the crowd. And Senator John McCain says doctors have given him, quote, a very poor prognosis in his cancer battle. The 80-year-old was diagnosed with brain cancer in July. He had surgery and then returned to Congress 11 days later to cast a no vote on the GOP health care reform bill. McCain says his cancer is very, very serious. The former naval pilot survived six years as a prisoner of war in Vietnam. Well, the first female Marine has graduated from the infantry officer course. A Marine whose name has not yet been released was one of 131 Marines who started the course back in July. The grueling 13-week course trains and educates newly selected infantry and ground intelligence officers. 88 graduated today. The female officer is now assigned to the 1st Marine Division at Camp Pendleton in California. The Marines open all military occupational specialties to women last April. Good for her. Yeah. Well, statues of Christopher Columbus sparking controversy. Now a town on Long Island offering to take those unwanted statues. Hear why they feel it's important to preserve the monuments. And the search for a woman who swiped two lizards from a pet store. Hmm. And in AccuWeather, latest Hurricane Hunter finding a stronger Maria. Flight level winds at 98 miles an hour and a lower pressure than the previous update. So we'll see whether it strengthens in the 5 o'clock advisory. Over us right now, we've got some sunshine out there. It is very warm. Our temperature is about 86 degrees through the evening hours. Dressed for a nice summer evening in the 70s. We'll have some low clouds early, but still partly sunny and warm again tomorrow. Of the latest seven-day AccuWeather forecast, including the 5 p.m. Maria advisory, it's next on First to Four.
And we continue to follow this breaking news. This is uh, from Route 303 in Valley Cottage. This is in Rockland County. You're looking at live pictures right now from Newscopter 7. Uh, very serious accident between that Enterprise rental truck and a dump truck carrying asphalt. We understand at least one person has been seriously injured. You can see firefighters and first responders still on scene there. We're going to have an update coming up right after this. Almost time to wind down. Tonight's Sunset is sponsored by Mattress Firm. Love your mattress guaranteed only at Mattress Firm. Visit a Mattress Firm location near you or online at mattressfirm.com. It's Mattress Firm semi-annual sale, meaning your favorite mattresses are on sale. Plus, get an additional 10% off and get free delivery on select purchases. Visit a Mattress Firm store for all you loved about sleepies and more during our semi-annual sale. It's a place that inspires the dreamers, the overachievers, a place for those who follow the path, as well as the ones who blaze them. So whether you want to go with the flow or rise above it all, visit Bucks County. My light went out last night in the rain in the middle of my show. I've had it. We're switching to Spectrum. Wait, what? Honey? All right, you've got free HD and free primetime on demand. Yeah, right. <laughs> free. <laughs> yeah, it's free. Get Spectrum TV with superior HD in any weather, plus thousands of titles free on demand. Just $29.99 a month. Call 844-575-2999. And you get 100 megabit Spectrum internet. 100? Is that even legal? Shouldn't you get ready for work? Get the fastest internet starting speeds for the price, just $29.99 a month, plus unlimited nationwide calling with Spectrum Voice. Call 844-575-2999. <laughs> okay, you're all set. That's a deal, huh? One-year contract? Two. Nope. No contracts. Uh, what happens on Maple Street stays on Maple Street. Get Spectrum TV, Internet, and Voice for just $29.99 a month each with no contracts. Call 844-575-2999. Coming this fall, a new champion you don't want to miss. Is it too soon to start making comparisons with Ken Jennings? Who will it be? I'm in awe. It's a new season of Jeopardy. Tonight at 7, right here on ABC7. Officials are on the lookout for a Long Island lizard thief. Suffolk County police say this woman seen here made off with two bearded dragon lizards from Selmer's Petland in Huntington Station. The woman was in the store with two young boys on August 23rd. A $5,000 reward is being offered for information. Well, a woman in, from Buffalo is demanding answers this afternoon after she said that a city employee stabbed her dog. Jillian Mann says that her mother took her dog, Audi, for a walk in the park Saturday morning. That's when police say a parks employee with the city had words with her mother and then stabbed the dog in the chest on her chest on her left side like by her heart like he went to kill her he he knew what he was doing he wanted to kill her well police say that parks worker is now facing several charges the dog underwent emergency surgery and has a long road to recovery ahead well target workers will be seeing a bounce in their paycheck starting next month the base pay for the retail giant will jump to 11 dollars in october and by 2020 it will go to 15. that far exceeds the federal minimum wage and the hourly base pay at Target competitor Walmart. The company hopes the increases will keep employees longer and draw higher quality candidates. Still to come, new technology to keep teen drivers safe. The new options for parents to monitor their young drivers. And mm, does it go too far? And before we're going to break, uh, most people think of cream cheese as a topping for bagels. But now a dessert shop in the East Village is making cream cheese the main attraction. We're going to take you inside New York's first cream cheese shop. Our latest installment of Neighborhood Treats. Uh, you'll find it only at ABC7 and why it's in our featured section. Today at 5, coffee apps make it easy to pay. But do they leave you exposed to theft? How much money are you out? $2,150. Why won't the coffee giant brew up a refund? Seven on your side takes on a job of giant and reveals how to protect your coffee cash. Today at 5 on Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Phil Murphy believes taxes in Jersey aren't high enough. So Murphy plans to raise them $1.3 billion more. Right. Phil Murphy. He's really loaded, really liberal, and real.
perfectly orchestrated, in sync with your life. Hackensack Meridian Health is redefining how health and care come together. Because when everything works together, your world gets better. Hackensack Meridian Health. Life years ahead. Today, a strategic growth plan is helping New York Southern Tiers soar. It begins with more powerful batteries that make everything from cell phones to rail cars more efficient, which helps improve every aspect of advanced rail technology. With support from a highly educated workforce and vocational job training. Here and all across New York State, we're building the new New York. To grow your business with us in the Southern Tier, visit esd.ny.gov. New Jersey is facing an epidemic fueled by opioid painkillers. In honor of Recovery Month, we want you to know that recovery from addiction is possible. The signs you spot today could save a loved one tomorrow. To learn more, visit reachnj.gov. Phil Murphy believes taxes in Jersey aren't high enough. So, Murphy plans to raise them $1.3 billion more. Phil Murphy. He's really loaded, really liberal, and really doesn't get New Jersey. You know, considering August was not all that warm, you kind of forget what <laughs> really warm weather felt like. And yeah. you, I'm going to show you a calendar a second, just looking at September. Don't forget the first 10, 11 days were pretty cool. Right. I mean, it felt like October. So big bounce back there. So if, uh, you know, around the garden, all the hibiscus is still there and everything, mm -hmm. it, it's switch over to mums later in the week. That's when we're really right? going to, yeah, it'll all it kind of have that feel by Friday into the upcoming weekend. So outside we go this afternoon. We have some hazy skies over Midtown right now, but still a lot of sunshine. I mean, it feels great out there. But, I mean, it will be a rude awakening once we can't reach the 70-degree mark over the weekend. Sunshine right now, an easterly wind at about 6 miles an hour. So check out this calendar. 11 out of the first 12 days below average. We were 5.5 degrees below average on the 11th. I mean, that's tough to really overcome, but we did it. Look at all these above normal days, including the record high yesterday. So now we're a degree and a half above average for the month. And if you look at the overall pattern, even though we're cooling back to normal this weekend, Climate Prediction Center suggesting we're going to have above normal temperatures for October, November, and December. Doesn't mean we won't have cool downs at times, but overall temperatures will be a little above average. Some low clouds are going to come in tonight, some high clouds as well. So toward morning, partly to even mostly cloudy, a couple spots might be some some patchy fog and then clouds will break for sun at times tomorrow but more of a partly sunny day still on the humid side and temperatures get in the lower 80s you can see some low cloudiness offshore there's some high clouds as well it's actually a combination of old jose right there there's the remnants just a little cluster of swirling clouds and then of course maria so i'm waiting for that five o'clock advisory to filter in let me see if it came in here doesn't look like much of a change here maybe the the pressure went down a little bit so there's some strengthening but i think the winds may actually go up but it's a Category 1 hurricane. Some of the outer rain bands getting to the Carolina coast over the next 24 to 36 hours. Weakens to a tropical storm by Wednesday morning. And then this hard right turn as it responds to a cold front getting to the east coast just in time to deflect it offshore. So tropical storm force gusts probably get to the outer bank. So there's more erosion, big wave action. And then this right turn as it goes out to sea on Thursday. So we don't get it. I mean, we get breezy conditions, but we don't get the tropical storm force winds, but we get some cloudiness, some wave action, some rip currents. So look at tonight. Notice the clouds offshore. Time stamp 10 o'clock. Notice how they'll come in. So you may have some low clouds around tomorrow morning, 60s, low 70s. Then during the day, the clouds will break out. We'll be in the low 80s. Clouds may be a little bit more stubborn along the immediate coast, but still a warm, humid day. Then we do that routine again, a little bit more cloudiness on Wednesday. Remember, this is when Maria is just off the outer banks, and clouds may thin out. But later Wednesday, there's an indication, at least with all this onshore flow, that a couple of showers may get in here later Wednesday, Wednesday night into very early Thursday. So that may be the first time we need the umbrella. Uh, easterly wind boaters tomorrow is not all that strong, but don't let that fool you. Four to seven foot waves, small craft advisory. The rip current risk remains high until late this week. So here's your seven-day AccuWeather forecast. We're still in the low 80s the next three days. All right, so it still feels like summer here. And then that cold front comes through Thursday morning. So from late Wednesday and early Thursday, there might be a shower there. Thursday, it's 80 by day, but 58 at night. And then you get back to normal. Low 70s, even some upper 60s over the weekend. So if you really want that refreshing October feel, we'll get it. End of the week. So I won't need the air conditioner after a couple of days. No, that's like. it. You put it on the heat at night. Yeah.
All right, thanks. All right. Liz. Well, it can be a rather nerve-wracking uh, rite of passage for parents when teenagers get behind the wheel for the first time. In fact, teen drivers are three times more likely to be involved in deadly accidents. Top three fa factors are distraction, no seatbelts, and speeding. But now, car manufacturers have new technology to help keep kids safe and put their parents at ease. ABC's David Curley has a story. A teen driver, radio on, distracted by her phone, then this. None of the teens in these incidents provided by the AAA died. But today, four teens will die in crashes. Oh, Could technology cut those statistics? The car Patrick Harley is driving has been programmed by his parents. Seatbelts, speed, even radio volume. I can't put it any louder than that. That's as loud as it goes. General Motors and Ford now offering teen driving options in vehicles. And this you can limit the speed of the vehicle. Freelance writer Michael Harley, Patrick's father, was given a loaner car by GM to test the technology for a couple of weeks and write an article. The technology provides a report card, hard braking, excessive speed, tailgating, all recorded. Not only limits for the car, but where the teen travels to as well. For a monthly fee, a parent can see if their teen stays within the agreed boundary. Family Link is going to text you when they arrive at work, when they arrive at home, or at their friend's house. And uh, this is all virtual, but it's peace of mind for the parent. And Patrick knew... In the back of my mind, I know he's going to see whatever I'm doing later on the report card. He was doing a whole bunch of heartbreaking and a whole bunch of tailgating. And uh, the more we talked about it, by the end of the week, uh, very few tailgating episodes and zero heartbreaking. Sounds a bit big brother parental hovering? Possibly, if not used correctly. Spying does not work, and I do think that having texts and apps that relate to driving is going to be a part of our kids growing up. However, I think it's critical that it's done collaboratively. Should this be required where teen drivers are actually monitored? Absolutely. We think this is the future when it comes to the next level of ensuring our teens are safer. National Safety Council CEO and former chair of the NTSB, Debbie Herzman, believes this technology will save lives and is using it herself. Her son, Taylor, just got his driver's license and sees an upside. Gives me a little bit more freedom. A side benefit Patrick Harley has enjoyed, too. They're not there with you the entire time, and they can only see how you're doing from a distance, which is through the report card. David Curley, ABC News, Washington. I like that idea. Mm -hmm. All Me teams too. should have yeah. it. <laughs> Coming up, as cities consider whether or not to get rid of Christopher Columbus statues, one town in Long Island is welcoming them. Hear why they say this legacy should be preserved. While you're standing in line at the grocery store, squeeze your buttocks, tighten your tissue. Uh, a fitness face-off with legend Denise Austin and her daughter. Plus, a winner winner chicken dinner. Next, Rachel. Tomorrow morning at 10 on ABC7. Anniversary sale at Raymore and Flanagan. We're always growing and bringing new styles to you so you can celebrate. Save up to 25% on dining rooms and bedrooms. Up to 28% on living rooms. Up to $1,000 on mattress sets with no interest for 72 months. Join our VIP club for a chance to win a tour of Italy dream vacation. Six nights for two in Italy. Savings and an anniversary giveaway. Ends Monday, 9 p.m. at Raymore and Flanagan. Your life is busy. Your life is on a budget. There is one place you can count on to help you save time, save money. ShopRite, where you'll save more week after week than at any other local supermarket. Maxwell House Coffee and Melita Ground Coffee is only $2.99 with your Price Plus card. And Nabisco Chips Ahoy cookies are two for only $4 with your card. At ShopRite, we're all about food. We're all about savings. We're all about you. This is the J.D. Power Award for dependability. I want you to give it to the friend that is most dependable. Oh! Is this required? Does she have to? She doesn't have to. <laughs> Tough choice, isn't it? Yes. Well, luckily, Chevy makes it a little easier because it's the only brand to earn J.D. Power Dependability Awards for cars, trucks, and SUVs two years in a row. Wow. It's really nice in here. Current qualified competitive lessees can get this 2017 Chevy Malibu for around $169 a month. See your local Chevy dealer. 
Christopher Columbus's legacy has sparked a lot of controversy in recent weeks, and as a result, we have seen statues damaged, defaced, and vandalized. And now some cities, including New York City, are considering whether to remove the statues altogether. Yeah, but one town on Long Island is sending out word to those cities, if you don't want the statues, we'll take them. Long Island reporter Kristen Thorne has a story from Massapequa. We will not stand by and let Columbus's legacy be tarnished or slandered by misguided individuals that have no respect for history or heritage. Those in the town of Oyster Bay say they would be happy, proud in fact, to display a Christopher Columbus statue here at this park in Massapequa. He represents the Italian American spirit, the people who have owned businesses, brought about so many remarkable advances. You remember the recent controversy surrounding the removal of Confederate General Robert E. Lee statues around the country. Shortly after that, some people began to turn their attention towards statues of Christopher Columbus. New York City said it was reviewing the status of all its landmarks, including statues of the 15th century Italian explorer. We're marking that line in the sand to Mayor de Blasio and any other mayor who thinks that this sort of thing is a good idea to be disrespectful to the spirit of Italian Americans. A spokesperson for the de Blasio administration says the city has no plans to move any of its Columbus statues, but in the meantime, local Italian American groups are raising money to move the statues here if need be. What are we fighting for in this country? I mean, we're fighting to keep America, America. What made America? That's the biggest question is over. What make America? And that goes back to Christopher Columbus. In Massapequa, Kristen Thorne, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, there's still much more news ahead. I would just use a five begins right now. Now, New York's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness News. A war words escalating to new heights between North Korea and the United States. The Koreans claiming Trump has declared a state of war and is now threatening to shoot down any U.S. warplanes that cross into their airspace. But first at 5 o'clock, he was once one of the Democratic Party's rising stars. But tonight, former and disgraced New York Congressman Anthony Weiner sentenced to nearly two years in prison for sexting a teenage girl. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bill Ritter, in for Diana Williams. And I'm Shade Betterinois. 21 months in prison. That's the sentence tonight for disgraced Congressman Anthony Weiner. As the sentence was read, he bowed his head and began crying. Mr. Weiner arguing medical and psychological treatment was what he needed, not prison. His lawyers calling the sentence severe. Eyewitness News reporter Tim Fleischer was in the courthouse for the sentencing. He's live in Lower Manhattan. Tim? And Shadi and Bill, it was a very emotional day for Anthony Weiner, and now this disgraced politician is looking at a hard jail time. Breaking down into tears, Anthony Weiner dabbed his face with a handkerchief as the judge sentenced him to 21 months in prison. The former congressman must also register as a sex offender, supply DNA, and pay a $10,000 fine. I was saddened and upset by the actions uh, that uh, he took. Former state senator Tom Duane, who has known Weiner since 1992, when they became city council members, believes he faces a challenging time. The more uh, people who care about him are around, uh, the more likely it is that he can have uh, a day-by-day -day recovery from his very, very serious disease. Weiner pleaded guilty of transferring obscene material to a minor after having illicit contact with a 15-year-old North Carolina girl. He had asked her to sexually perform for him during Skype and Snapchat conversations. Weiner tearfully told the court, I victimized a young person who deserved better 